I'm Linda Mariano. I'm the director of marketing for Redwood Media Group and Art Expo New York. It's my pleasure to introduce to you Michael Joseph and kick off the first um, seminar of our Topics and Trends education program that's part of our every Art Expo New York. And it's especially nice to be kicking it off with Michael because he is, he is an embodiment of so many aspects of the art business. First of all, he is a established photographer, fine art photographer, and uh, really some remarkable work. My only problem is I can never figure out which one of his pieces I love the most. I'm going to have to figure Thank that you. out this year, <laughs> I think. And then he is also um, the owner, along with his wife, of Art Blend. And Art Blend is a company that not only has a gallery, but represents a number of artists, also produces a magazine, which is a wealth of information. And then he also manages the exhibitions that are done at shows like Art Expo New York and other shows across the country. So you can see that there's these interconnected circles of everything that Michael and Art Blend is about. And so today, you're going to get a glimpse at those interconnected circles um, with his presentation on success secrets. Michael? Thank you for that wonderful introduction, Linda. And it is uh, an extreme pleasure to be back here for after so many years, um, especially sitting up here on the stage and uh, sharing this time with you. And um, hopefully there's some takeaway tips um, that I can share with you about my career and how I ended up here today. It's, it just seemed like a short time ago that um, I was an up-and-coming artist and looking to break in, looking for more exposure, uh, more opportunities. So uh, I reminded myself today on the walk over here what, what a distinct pleasure it really is to, to look back after not, not that long of a time, maybe, maybe 10 years, and uh, with the owners of Redwood Media Group, Eric Smith, Rick Barnett, um, Jeff, and the, and the team to ask me to be part of the Trends and Topics te uh, seminars. Um, I, I, I revel in the idea that there's something I'm going to share with you today that will, will help you along in your careers, okay? So I'm going to leave plenty of time at the end for questions and answers. I feel that that's uh, probably the most vital part of us getting together. Um, I'll, I'm going to go over with you, uh, as Linda said, what background I have and, and uh, where my wife and I are and the team of over 14 staff members today working full time. Okay, so uh, the company Art Blend, we are a full service art company. We do publish the magazine. We have a brick and mortar art gallery in Fort Lauderdale, 6,000 something square feet. And we've been participating at the art fairs for um, quite a long time now. Since I started with my career as a photographer, um, really uh, in those experiences is what put together the Art Blend program. I, I've made all the mistakes, all the trial and error, um, the expenses involved. Uh, we sifted out really what we thought was working for an artist, particularly myself, and what wasn't working, what we liked, what we didn't like, and how we kept adjusting it, adjusting it in nearly two decades now. And we're continuously adjusting and evaluating how we can improve and do better. Um, and that feedback comes from the artist and being at the art fairs. Okay, so I'm um, going to jump to, whoop, here we go. The first real kind of component of, of the company is the brick and mortar art gallery. And you can follow along with me if you like. Uh, in the magazines that are on the seats, um, towards the back of the magazine, um, very back section, there's a um, six page spread about the company and the independent uh, components of our company that you can look at and take with you. And if you don't, digest and process everything that I'm going to be going through with you in this short hour. 
Now, the bullet points to the art gallery, uh, reputation, uh, lo lo physical brick and mortar location versus online, uh, the words traditional versus vanity, and what is the sales commission. These, these are the first topics that um, really come up in questions that get, get asked about approaching art galleries or is it an art gallery necessity? Do I need to have one? Do I don't need to have one? Um, I always felt in my career that it was very important to have that represent, representation in a, in a gallery, in a storefront location. I like the idea of it that um, I have a home base. Uh, strategically, I positioned myself with galleries in geographical locations that made sense to me. Uh, Linda hinted at my career as a photographer. I'm a cityscape photographer, so it sort of made sense for me to be in those uh, high-end metropolitan locations. And um, those relationships at the galleries were different. Uh, spin the clock back many years ago. You can go back to mid-century, 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, the millennium. It's all changed. Ten years ago, when my wife got together with me, you know, she, she managed my career. She's a businesswoman and said, there, there's got to be another way. We, we saw a trend, if you will, that was happening that the, the traditional gallery business model of discovering talent, consigning their work to the gallery, splitting the commission 50%, and everybody was happy. It was becoming antiquated and archaic. It wasn't, that, that business model was breaking down slowly and slowly as the generations moved forward. Um, so we, we started to look at it carefully, and particularly by coming to some of the art fairs and getting out in public, we could see that in the, in the future, where we are now, to, um, that things would start to change a little bit. I was always an artist that was very much interested in investing in my own career. I learned something along the way. I had some wonderful mentors, and one of the things that I always remembered was uh, an individual saying to me, Michael, if you're not willing to invest in your own career, what makes me want to invest in you? And people uh, that are that affluent or influential in any industry, um, they know that. It's, they're looking for that. They're looking for, for individuals or corporations or business or startup. Anything that anybody has already invested in starts to pique more people's interest. Oh, there must be something going on there. So. Um, I thought that was valuable when I did start to invest in my own career, and my money going into the services and the components that I'm talking with about with you. So the word vanity gallery came up years and years ago, and my wife and I worked diligently defending the connotations that came with that. Uh, it wasn't a dirty word. It just meant that we were going to build this relationship together, us and the artists, and we were going to work together, but we had to somehow make it work. Um, I didn't have the capital to run a 6,500 square foot gallery with all the overhead and hope to sell enough paintings to make it work. We would collapse, it would collapse from underneath of us, and you would have another gallery not to exist in. So we had a sort of a blend, if you will, that we would do it together. And that's really the art blend approach to it, is that uh, we, we have all the gears in place, we all have the components in place to run an, a successful art gallery, a brick and mortar gallery, where your art is on the wall, there's a staff there working for you, we're marketing you, we're doing social media for you, um, and it's working. And that way you have another place to keep your art. And the best part about what we do when we're talking with the artist is because the, the relationship is us together, um, it, it's not just that we, we will hear this more and more this week while you're here, that it's not about just signing with a gallery and great, I'm signed, I have an agent, I have a manager, and they're going to do everything, and I'm going to paint and you know, wait for the mailbox money to show up. Uh, again, it's a different millennium. That might have been true at a different time, but today you take your careers in your hands and you work together and you network with people, you build relationships, and Therefore, we find a lot of artists that are working with us, they just, you know, in essence, really wanted to be able to, to have a place that they have clients, they have connections. In our galleries in Fort Lauderdale, a lot of people coming through that area, very busy area. And we hear, whether it's New York or California, Chicago, uh, Italy, Paris, Canada, doesn't matter. And we always hear more so that someone says, 
hey, I, I know somebody or I have a relative that's going through Fort Lauderdale and, and they would like to see my art. And, and they, so the gallery is a benefit for them because now they have some credibility, reputation, and value to send somebody to see their art. Uh, when I was up and coming, nobody believed me if, if they were coming over to my 400 square foot studio to see some paintings taped on the wall or you know in a frame, and it, it just wasn't credible. They they knew that they were that they may like the imagery, but eh, they were talking about again that key word investing in my art. That they were hoping that my art would bring them more value in the future, not just decorate their walls. But they wanted something that would last, that they could pass through generations, and said they made a really good, solid purchase. So um, those areas are, the, are what we looked at when we built our gallery. Uh, the sales commission, we did something different that I learned coming up in the business, that we created something from Elaine's world, my wife, who's the businesswoman in, in, in the side of our relationship, more so than myself. I'm an artist, I'm creative. but. I wanted to learn more about what was in her mind. She said, Michael, there's a thing in industry called ROI. In business, that's called return on investment. I've used the word investment a dozen times already, and I'm going to continue to use it because that's what you're, we are all doing, investing. We're investing today to be here. You're invested to be in the seats, and I applaud you for that because all the empty seats are all people that know more than me. They name more than you, apparently. Um, the... So ROI, return on investment. Art Blend has done something very unusual, but it's, again, to the fair advantage of the artist. Of course, there's fees to be involved in the services that, that we offer, but what we've done that was a little bit different was we figured, you know what? Let's make it so that when the artist artwork sells with us, we give them 100% of the sales until they made the return on their investment back. Well, what does that mean? So, well, Michael, if they paid $5,000 to be with us to do X, Y, Z, to be in the gallery or the magazine or go to an art fair, great, let's take their artwork in. They've paid us. They, they, they've asked us to perform for them, and that's our agreement. So we've priced their artwork with them, and the art is in the gallery, or maybe it's coming to the art fair with us, or somebody has seen it in our magazine, and we've made a sale. And you've priced your art at... I don't know, say $4,000 or $5,000. But 100% of that sale will go to you as the artist until you've reached the amount that you've paid us. After that, it's even more fair to you. We've, we've, we've allowed that 75% gets paid to the artist and we'll work on 25%, 25%. So you've made your X amount of back, we're continuing to sell, you're in the profits now, and so are we. We call that a back-end deal. We'll take our money and our profits uh, in advantages after you succeeded. So m more on that later if that's a little vague, but um, it's uh, a, a really wonderful arrangement to sales commission, okay? So uh, the magazine component of our company, and I can recite this, there's pretty pictures in the magazine you can look at. The slideshow will do its thing. Um, the magazine for me was something that my wife and I decided to put together because it was a wonderful takeaway, it was tangible, it was done with well quality, in my opinion, and I wanted something that uh, the artists could share with their, again, with their collectors, with their clients that they could take away. Because particularly for us, we wanted to give it away at the trade show. That's called Critical Mass that's here this weekend. It's uh, you know, 25, 30,000 people possibly walking through here for the weekend. And if they visit us at the Art Blend booth, we're giving thousands of these away. They're walking away with it. There's exposure there. They're reading it on the plane. It's ending up on the coffee table. All the corporate art consultants, the, the designers that are here, they're on trade day. They're taking it with them. They're not throwing it away. It's not ending up in the garbage on the way out of here. Maybe a small percentage is, but uh, that's, that's allotted for. Um, I don't like to think that that's where it's going, and neither does my wife, <laughs> and neither do you. That's your investment. But um, uh, the, so th that's the idea of the Art Blend magazine because I'm going to share a little uh, testimonial with you that uh, I, I uh, up and coming in my photography career uh, when I was looking to get that leverage and that exposure and that edge on my competition because 
let's face it, today everybody's a photographer and my career is taking a backslide thanks to technology, right? So I don't even bring a camera this, with me this weekend anymore. It's a 13 megapixel phone doing just fine. And, you know, these guys are my competition today and they're doing great gals and guys with the photography. So, but early on I asked my dad, I had no money, living in my 400 square foot little studio, and I saw a black and white photography magazine and I just completely imagined my stuff in there, how great it would look and how busy I would get. And again, having my dad as my mentor offered some wonderful constructive criticism <laughs> and I had to um, defend myself and as he was uh, sort of playing the devil's advocate why I should take this ad on. Well, I must have done pretty well because he let me borrow the $1,200 and we put the ad in the magazine and to, to the answer that I gave my dad was, Pops, I don't, he asked me how many copies were in distribution. I said, well, look, I don't, I don't need everybody. I'm not trying to be everything to everybody. I just need that one person that'll change my day or change my week or change my month or year or life. And he nodded at that and said, yeah, that's pretty interesting. So who's your one individual? Can you define that? I said, well, it's got to be somebody that likes photography and they got to like black and white and they got to like buildings. He goes, you couldn't have narrowed the pie any narrower than that. So short of the long story is that magazine came out and uh, I, I got a phone call or an email a few months later um, and um, a gentleman that was interested in using my photography wasn't in quite right interested in buying prints, which I thought that was going to happen. He was going to buy a bunch of artwork. That was the idea I thought behind the ad. But it came in a different way. It was one gentleman who was having lunch with another gentleman in California, and the story goes was he had the he was the publisher of the mag of the magazine that had my ad in it. And he put it down on the table, and the gentleman that he was having lunch with just so happened to be a, um, a licensing in distribution and manufacturing uh, for the biggest calendar company in the world. And he was flipping through the magazine, saw the ad, said, who's this guy? <laughs> he said, oh, young guy from Florida. Um, here, here's his number, call him, and, and we, made it, we made that deal, and that deal, I'm still making what I call mailbox money on, checks still show up, they licensed probably about 50, 60 images of mine for a calendar deal that has gone on for 10 years. Um, the company, if you're looking for the name, is called Brown Trout, they're the single largest calendar company in the world. Um, so that, that's, you know, luck. Um, Chance favors the well-prepared mind. I don't know, call it what you want, but that was, what I'm getting at is that things will happen, but you gotta put it out there, and I did pay my dad back the money. Okay, so that's, that's the story on, on magazines. Does it work, does it work for you? It can work. Think about how you want it to work. In a show like ours with Art Blend, uh, we're having tremendous success with it. The artists are telling us uh, that they're getting a lot of uh, contacts and leads and, and interest from it. So um, the um, uh, key component that I feel was another uh, instrumental part of having some success. Um, Critical mass, I mentioned that word, is where a large group of people come, they're coming to look at the art, they're in the mindset to look at art, buy art, see art, discover art, how wonderful. Um, conversely to that, the art gallery, which becomes, again, my, my wife's business terms, destination location. It's, you know, you have to know that you're going there, you have to find it, you Google it, um, it's a specific geographical area, and it, it's a little bit, smaller uh, to narrow down to be able to, f to find that buyer to come into the gallery to sell artwork. It happens and you rely on your gallery to be embedded in their community to develop the attraction to bring in the individuals to buy art. And that takes time, it takes a lot of work, a lot of effort, and like said, we've been at it for over uh, a decade with, with our business. But there's nothing like what you're gonna experience here this weekend. Um, 
I think it's the most amazing opportunity of all is, is participating in the, in the art fairs uh, for the very reasons that I mentioned. So uh, what happens here, what happened for me early on and what I'm bringing to my artists today is uh, there's two ways to go about it. And, and neither is right or wrong. It's uh, what's right and you think what's right for you and what's working for you. In the beginning, um, uh, my wife and I flew to Las Vegas, we, Miami, we came to New York, and before we even decided to participate in, in an art fair, we, we knew about the Art Expo, the Redwood Media Group brand, and we had done our homework and due diligence and read all about them, and it said, it just looked so fantastic. We came out, we met the guys and walked around, and talked to some of the artists and visited the booth, and we said, look, that's it, next year, we we'll take a little 10 by 10 booth, and we're gonna uh, represent ourselves. And that was terrific, and I, and I commend a lot of the artists that are doing it here. I hope to get the chance to speak to them further about what Art Blend is doing on the main floor and how we got there. What happens in, in, in the, in the uh, beginning is you become, what my dad taught me was to become comprehensive about what you're doing. This is the place that you're gonna sort of practice, figure out what's working, what's not working, you're gonna, you're gonna get feedback, and that is so valuable. Uh, the idea that um, I was gonna spend, you know, at that time, and even today, you know, this, this investment, um, thousands of dollars to, to come up here to have a show, and you're gonna, you know, it all, you, know you buy your booth, you got a hotel, you got flight, you got shipping, miscellaneous, it starts to really add up. I mean, what, that, that 10 by 10 booth at the time for me cost me probably over $10,000 by the time I was all in. And the idea that I was gonna be able to sell that much artwork to make it pay for itself in four days, well, I couldn't convince my dad or my wife that. <laughs> so, and, and they had been to the show, and we walked around and we talked to everybody. Said, well, that's not what it was quite about. It was, again, a long-term game. Uh, it was about uh, not being a sprint, but being a marathon that, okay, that what we use residuals would come into play. That over time, that marketing that's going on, that networking that we're doing on this floor is so vital. I mean, I, right back at my booth right now, there's three people working the booth because I don't want to miss a minute. Everybody that's walking by, everyone that's coming in uh, gets greeted. Uh, we exchange um, contact, network, because that's the most valuable is the follow-up. So thinking about that, um, I, w I was again able to convince the team um, that we were gonna do the art fair. So we went, same thing. I, I didn't sell enough to pay for my booth in those early years. But down the road, month, two, three, four months, nine months, the phone started to ring, the email started to come in, and hey, do you remember me? This is so and so. I met you at the show. I've been on your website, and um, I'm I'm I have a project, or I have something that re I'm, I'm interested in your work. Well, excellent. So that happened, and then eventually we started to sell enough work where we realized checks and balances. The show paid for itself. Not only that, but we are now profiting very well. I'm, I'm scanning the cheers, I'm looking, but there's, uh, it's trade day. So um, as, a, as another testimonial to you, because I'm not up here just BSing you or in letting you know anything that's untrue. This is, this is passionate about what I do, and uh, I've been doing it, as I said, long enough that they've invited me up here to share with you. Um, there's a couple of designers that are here this weekend that, that have been buying work from me for the last 10 years, every year. Every year, uh, we've been still doing projects together. And, and now, not only with my own photography, but with artists through ArtBlend, where we've, we've been able to build a network and a database, and conservatively, 40,000 names in my database that we've cultivated over the years, opt-in, networking, exchanging business cards, postcards, whatever it may be. On the, but that's a huge list. I mean, the value to that is, 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 is uh, talk about investment, that's incredible. So that, you know, to the ARPEN pro program, you know, that's what we're sharing with our artists that come on board with us, is that the idea that we've already invested, we've done this work, we've been doing it for so long, that we know who's who, we know who's who in the industry, whether it's art fair operators and owners, whether it's distributors, licensing companies, other art galleries, 
um, collectors, buyers, designers, association of interior designers and decorators, corporate art consultants. We know them. And because not only do we do that social media and the network and the email, but we're at the shows. We do four art fairs a year. We do them every quarter. Uh, we have our spring show here in New York. We do Art Hamptons show in July. We do San Diego in late September, October, and then the granddaddy of them all in Miami um, in early December, the Spectrum show. So um, that's in our backyard, and, and the Art Basel Miami week is just enormous. It's, it's, it's this show on steroids. If you haven't been down there, it's, it's, you know, it's probably 50 times the size of this in Miami in the winter. It's just amazing. Um, so how'd I do? Let's see. We give a breath. Um, let's open it up to Q&A. All right? So uh, I think the only other component that uh, we didn't, I didn't speak of, and um, I don't know if this thing is working, but the branding component, which is sort of really, when I, Linda was talking about my, the circles of success or the six spheres of success, um, I, I I, I really, this, this part of the sphere probably could be the sphere at the front. Uh, we call it the branding sphere, the marketing, where this is the stuff that you should already be doing before you even get to the other components, the gallery, the magazine, and the art fairs. Um, a website is so important today. Um, art Blend years ago, uh, we developed a, a media arm to our company that just that's all we were doing. We had a, a team, to this day, we still have a team of guys that are, and gals that are graphic designers and illustrators and website develop, developers, uh, videographers, and it's, and it's wonderful. The, the team that works on all these things, um, because Michael Joseph in the beginning and even Art Blend, and we knew that the presence on the internet Again, you know, the millennial, we knew this was going to be important. So important, you already know this. If you're not doing social media, if, you know, if you're not working with your, your phone, your tablet, you, you, you're antiquated and you're going backwards. You're not even, you're not even going forward. And every day, you've got to get up and, and hustle to go forward. So um, that part of it, get, get that together. That is essential that you're coming to a show, you're coming to an art fair, you have those marketing pieces, a little business card, a little postcard with you, a little handout. Um, I don't like to make things too big. Early on, we learned that nobody has any room for anything big. They don't have, they're not carrying bags and backparks. They want a little postcard, a little business card, they want to slip it into their pocket, a little vest pocket, a little handbag, that's it. There's something to take away, the most important information, your name, your website, email, telephone number, an image of what you do. That's all branding. You're going to hear that you know, this whole weekend if you continue to come to the seminars. There's some great lecturers here um, that know all about this. And those, those, are the, those are the essentials. That's what I did for myself. I got my, my website up and running. And I can't tell you how important it is if you're, if you're it's, it's like anything else in an industry. Uh, spend that investment making a nice website. That's your First impression, and you've heard it said, there's no second opportunities for a first impression. So today, you've got to get on a website, and the key word here is responsive. That means it's got to work on a phone, it's got to work on a tablet, it's got to work on a PC, both types of PCs, Macs, Android, right? So it's got to work. It's got to be fast. It's, it's got to pop up. It's got to be pretty. It's got to be current. I can't tell you how many times my wife and, and the team, they, they, they go on a website. It's a little clunky. It's not working right. And in 15 seconds, bye-bye. Because, again, we're, we're, we're going to work with you. I want, I want you to go on our blend. I hope it's working this morning. But it, it's, it's got to be. It's got to be impressionable. And my reputation is going to be connected to yours. So if, if we're not sort of looking the same or in sync, well, I, I hope to add that credibility and value to your career by everything that we've established and invested in, in, in what we're doing. So I'm, I'm looking for emerging artists. I'm not just working with mid-career established artists. We're looking for artists that we can work with. We want to work with you, and we want to, you know, I'm here to consult. I'm here to share more with you about what we've done but that website is essential. So if it's a little clunky, and I've had this happen, I, I, I have to show the art fear, the artist that I'm taking to the show. 
Um, and, and they're looking at that carefully as I'm curating, especially some of the shows that I'm doing. And I, I've gotten rejected. No, I don't know. I've been on, I went to their website. Michael, it's, it's not credible. I don't believe it. And some of the, so that also happens for me. They're just not accepting every artist that I want to take and show in some of the art fairs. They're looking at it carefully because our reputations are connected. So those websites are important. Those takeaway marketing collateral pieces are very important. And uh, I don't do the social media. I'm not that person for our company. Um, I have uh, some younger individuals who completely wrap their mind around it and uh, understand it. And I'll be texting and doing some things with my phone today, but um, I, I've seen how important those networks are, the Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, it's, it's fabulous. Um, so that's, that's everything. Okay, so that's branding. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna open up to the q and I think I have a little bit more time. Um, and bef before I do, I'm, gonna, I'm looking at this audience and I'm gonna tell you a little antidote at how we got to the six fears of success. Uh, I'm going to share a short story with you. I think most of you may remember an arcade game called Pinball. Yeah, right? Machine flippers, ping, bing, 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 bing. All right, Pinball. I was, as a visual, creative type, was completely attracted to Pinball when I was a little kid. That's all I wanted to do. I wanted to play and you know, buzz, bing, lights and all that. And I wanted to be good at it. I wanted to be better than anybody else at it. And my family nicknamed me the, the pinball wizard. Here he goes. But back then, the game was 10 cents or a quarter. I'm, I'm talking I was really young. I, don't, I didn't know where I was going to get that money. And, and, and my dad, who would only give me the most valuable thing in life, he told me, was he worked his butt off for his money, and it was his money, <laughs> and that uh, I had to work for mine. And he taught me that as a, as a little kid. He was great. Play all you want. Be the best you want to be. Um, figure out how you're going to get those quarters to play that game. And he watched me play, and he said, oh, you're, you're pretty good at that. Um, who's your competition? Look around. Who's the other guys that are, that, are, that are playing? And what makes you so good at the game? And that's what this art industry and business is about. I, I, I sort of make the comparison to the six spheres of success that when we came up with that, we figured in pinball we got five balls. And you had to tally up the score and ring as many buttons and bells and get a high number. And if you were fortunate enough, you'd either get a free ball or a free game. And you can sustain playing and sustain the joy and the excitement and adulation of what you were experiencing. And to me, I, I approach the art the same way. I wanted more free games, I wanted more exposure, I wanted more involvement, and I wanted to be the best at it. And that's where that comes from, is that when I slowed down and relaxed a little bit, and I had consultants, and I, had a, I, I put people in place with me to help coach me, I, I've got lawyers, creative coaches, gallerists, um, my wife, my business manager, uh, younger individuals could do what they do and they're, they're better at it. That would all improve me in my career. So pinball was the same thing. At first I was just so young and I didn't understand that bing, 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 just flap the buttons and the ball would go and hit it when it came back. But when I slowed down, I realized there was a strategy to this. That there was things that you could do to tally up the game. I didn't quite get that because I was too busy by the lights and all the graphics. But much like this art industry, it may seem like all, all that from the edges, right? It's, oh my God, it's so much art and it's so busy out there and I don't know who to talk to and there's all these emails coming with all these solicitations and different art companies. I don't know what to do and who should I do it with? Slow down. Take a breath and do your due diligence. Look at it. Read about it. Make a phone call. You can always get me on the phone. Anybody that calls Art Blend, they put me right on the phone. I'm, I'm there. I'm approachable. I'm not, I'm not you know, behind some curtain pulling some levers. It's, 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 we're, we're available. I want you to understand this business, this business of art, what we're, what we're so uh, uh, blessed to do and get to do it and do more of it. So that was the game. Slow down. I looked at the game. I analyzed it, and I started to realize, oh, if I hit that target, 
if I hit that bumper, if I, if I just slowed down the process and focused, bing, bang, boom, kabam, I was, I was, I was hitting. And I was more s slowed down and more strategically involved. And know who the best at this is? Athletes. Also mentors to me. I watched guys. I got around them. I said, Michael, what do you know about sports? Nothing. I can't hit, run, throw. I'm horrible. I'll never be a baseball player. But I like the game. But they taught me, guys that I got the chance to be around, was that the same thing. I ever, ever, you know, like this past Super Bowl, I tuned in in the last 10 minutes. And I said, that guy, don't count him out yet. It was like, I don't even know watch sports, but it was like, it was unbelievable. I said, babe, settle down. I, I, I know a little something about this guy. He's, he's down three touchdowns and there's 10 minutes to go. Uh-uh. This guy, he, it's going to be so quiet in his head. And you know the story, right? Came back, they won the Super Bowl. Unbelievable. But that's the same process I'm, I'm sharing with you. If, you. if you have the talent, it's in, within you. Nurture it and bring it out. Okay, so in conclusion, that's it. That's my story. Bing, bang. Questions and answers. Go ahead. Yep. In your Art Blend program, you were speaking about social media and all that. Do you have these young guys actually help the artists run their social media stuff because they're young guys? <laughs> yeah, young, young girls and guys because, well, I'm, I'm a little challenged in that area. Let's face it. I'm, not, I'm busy doing what I do. I'm, I enjoy doing what, what part of the, the business that I do. I want to be out more. I want to be with artists. I'm, I'm doing all the logistics for putting the, the shows together. Um, and, you know, it, it, look, I didn't, it, it's like, it's like math, right? You know, old school math, new math, anything, anything, you know, not to be scared by it. I, I taught my 80 year old dad how to use a computer. You know, he, he gets around on it, but there's things that I do and he's amazed, like, hey, how did you know that? How am I going to learn that? Don't worry about it. Don't have to learn it. Just do what you can do. So the young guys and gals that know it, they were brought up with it since they were, teen, you know, little toddlers, they get it. I, I know what social media is. I know what Facebook is and Twitter and all that. But absolutely, to watch them post and, and share and Pinterest, and, and, uh, it's, it's phenomenal. I mean, it's how we're all connecting. I, I think it's, my wife knows it too, and uh, she under, understands it and, and, and uh, has been a, a, a key force in, in developing it and doing more, more of it. I think we're seeing more artists now contacting us and uh, interacting with each other. One of my assistants told me that, Michael, that you know, they're, they're, they're forming little groups they're little, you know, we used to call them chat rooms and AOL and all that, but you're talking to each other. You're checking each other out. You're, hey, I, I, I heard this thing about Art Blend, or I heard, what do you guys think? Has anybody worked with them? Has, have they sold for you? And, and, and that's really cool. That's what I think and it keeps us honest. That's what, you, that's what has to happen. Um, you know, uh, I think that uh, the integrity that's in place uh, by social media, and for, you, for artists today, I haven't said it yet, but in the beginning, uh, traditional versus vanity or brick and mortar versus online, the, 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 it, it, the online are surpassing brick and mortar. Here in New York, in the Chelsea district, I was watching galleries close left and right over the last year or two. I was seeing so many uh, emails and, and uh, conversations. Um, they, were, you know, they were closing up shop. They couldn't afford it for whatever reason. And uh, the real estate out in L.A. was dry for, for decades in downtown L.A. You, I could have opened up galleries there years ago. And, and now they're, they're starting to go into that area because the rent was low. And they're, and they're, they're setting up an art colony in, in L.A. now. So, you, so keep, your, keep your eyes on California. San Diego is going to be phenomenal come this September. Uh, Rick and Eric just moved the show. They moved the date. Uh, Art San Diego is going to be explosive. Um, it'll be Art Plan's inaugural year here, and I'm, I'm completely thrilled because uh, the, year, the time of the year that they're doing it in the venue is, is a home run. So next question, buddy, back there, back in the back. No? Anybody? Anything? I covered all that ground? Something? Um, come on, don't be, don't be shy. A ask me questions. There's no, there's no dumb questions. Don't be embarrassed by anything. Um, the lady's going to be first. Sorry. Speaking of online, what are your thoughts on putting a buy button on your website? Is that something that should be separate from your professional website? I, I missed that. For what are your opinions on putting a buy button? A on buy button. Your but great question. Commerce. Back to e-commerce. Um, 
I, on my personal photography website, I do not have a buy now, e-commerce, click to PayPal uh, uh, platform on, on my website. Um, it, it's, for me, and this is just an opinion, I think that uh, um, as, as we approach a higher level to fine art, I think the, the, uh, it's discerning level. And I think that I wanted to present myself in a way that, again, that I was approachable. If you see an image that you like and you want to talk about it, and I put the information up. But I thought that what's, what's, what part of my website that I do have by now is I have a little shop. And those are my poster, a book, um, something of that nature. But my, all my high-end fine art stuff is um, contact me for further information and engage. Because I can't, I can't say enough about you know, ro you know, going back in time a little bit. And I think we need to get back to a little bit more relationship, more con contact together. You know, speaking on the phone a little bit more. I love to to, to uh, have meetings in person. I am always inviting people to come see me in the gallery. Let's sit down. But you know, our our time is so valuable. Like I said, we're moving so fast. Uh, technology is moving fast, and in the pace of everything that we're doing is just so fast. I I think that um, you know I I've made an effort at slowing down. So the buy now button, eh, you know, be careful with it. Use it. Wisely, I, I work with a couple of artists that are here this weekend. I've helped them build websites, and that's how we used it on, on their website, prints, um, posters, uh, limited in that way. Good question, though. Uh, I like e-commerce, though. I think that to do that, I, I'm hearing from a lot of artists um, in this day and age um, that a lot of artists are having independent success. So again, that, that do I need a gallery? I don't know. I mean, I own one, and it's very expensive to own. I, and I actually, sometimes my wife and I are having dinner, going, scratching our heads and going, yeah, why do we have this? This is a huge undertaking. And, you know, uh, attendance in the gallery, sales are starting to go like this. Um, it's teetering. You know, we, we've, you know it's, it's, uh, people are buying online. I'm hearing from a lot of artists that they're getting contacted. Um, they're being approached for the art. They're willing to buy from the artist directly, which is, you know, which is okay because I'm willing to work with you. And I told you I have an ROI in place that completely benefits you. I'm, I'm here to promote and work for you and sell as many paintings and artwork as you can. So I like, I like that, that that's working, um, that people are comfortable buying online. Your question? Yeah, that's me, the ar architectural photographer. Yeah, yep, that's it. Thank you. Uh, yes, it's it's architectural in the way that it, it's fine art, uh, as opposed to an interior architectural photo photographs. I, I uh, black and white structural. Um, and again, I, I started out uh, in my career. I said earlier that. Uh, I was just passionate about my subject and what I was doing, and I did it for free long before there were any galleries, before there was dealers, art fairs. I don't, I don't even think I had series yet to my art. I didn't, didn't even have titles. They were just photographs, and I was just making them. I loved to travel, and I was uh, really liked to be in these different metropolitan cities. I was... Um, I grew up in Connecticut, and New York City was one of the first big metropolitan cities I had gone to as a teenager, and you know everything was just looking up, and I was fascinated by it, and I just stuck with that, and I knew, that, like I said earlier, that I couldn't be everything to everybody. I wasn't trying to be. I just had to be somebody to somebody or to someone, and essentially, once they got to develop my brand, and uh, you know, you're uh, sort of a testimonial for me today, which was, you know, maybe somebody heard the name. And you know, and then you can conjure an image and put it together. And I think also that's what you know we consult and coach on in in the branding side of our company and the marketing was to concentrate on that. I, I meet with a lot of artists who sort of are, you know, they're they're they're, they're, they're again they're, they're they're that pinball. They're missing the targets. You know, they're they're kind of shooting in the dark. They're not sure what they do, or they're trying to play to the audience. You know, like a big show like today. What do they like? What do they like? What are they? What colors in? Is green it today? I'll paint green. Is red in? I'll paint red. I think that's just the flavor of the day. You got to stay. You know, this is all my opinion. Be true to what you're doing. 
because I think that really, but my work, I suffered. I suffered for a long time. I told you I was about as a narrow niche market as you can possibly be. Anybody probably that was a business consultant would have told me to close up shop. I mean, you're talking about a piece of, a whole piece of pie and I'm black and white, architectural <laughs> photography, and it, is, it was a perfect storm. People weren't collecting photography in America. Photography wasn't even considered an art form when I was started out doing it. So there's small piece of pie, black and white, everybody wanted color, and buildings? I don't, I don't get it. But luckily enough for me, some people got it. Thank you. Yes? Oh. Yeah. Oh, kind of. Hi. Um, I was wondering, what do you think about the value as an artist in um, showing things framed as opposed to unframed, and how does that play into online sales? Because it is an investment to get things framed yourself, but it does, I never do it because of the expense, but it does look a lot more professional and... Right. Framing, unframing, paintings, photography, there's so many different uh, mediums and, and techniques today. In, in my gallery, we probably have 90% of the things unframed. Probably even in the art fair today, 90 plus somethings of the art in our booth. I have 55 artists with us this, this season. And I, 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 don't, I can't think of maybe but a few things that are uh, on canvas that are framed. Of course, prints, photography, framed. Uh, photography today being printed on different substrates, um, metal and acrylic, which is interesting. I, I think what we see at Art Blend is minimal modern. Uh, a simple floater frame, you know, uh, basic color, silver, black, white, contemporary, seems to be the trend. Um, other individuals will come, come up here this week and have a say at that. I'm not, a, I'm not the authority on it. I can just share with you honestly what's going on with Art Blend. I think, you know, that uh, ultimately, uh, I, I like to say candidly that um, you gotta be, there's a fine line be between being too gimmicky or uh, kitschy about framing, that simple as it. I mean, let the artwork sing, and if you're insecure about the artwork and you think you're disguising it or cloaking it in some elaborate frame, or I don't know, I think people see through that. I think that they see, well, you know, is it really what I think it is, or is it just the frame? And then conversely, you know, a really bad frame can make a wonderful painting uh, uh, not shine so well. So good question, you know. Yes, Blue Jacket. Working? Okay, well, thank you. Um, thank you for your time. Um, looking at all these wonderful booths out here, I see a lot of items in some booths, not a lot of items in other booths. I saw the se a video of the seminar last year about less is more. Now, the catch-22 for me as a business manager for an artist is I'm looking at that, and I see the benefit of seeing the pieces when you're not camouflaged by a bunch of other pieces. However, you've hauled all these pieces across the country, across the world, and they're sitting in a crate. <laughs> yeah. And unless someone's peeking through the crates, yep. they might not be seeing some of your work. So that catch-22 exists. Mm -hmm. What's your take on how a booth should look? Great. What should be up there? Great question. Great question. Excellent question. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, that is, this is a really important question. Here's what I've learned. I'm going to share this with you. Um, and it, again, it's not going to be a right or wrong way, but I'm gonna, I, I've done this long enough that you, you've asked the question of me. So less is more, right? I, because I go back to what I said about 40 minutes ago. In, in a trade show like this or an art fair like this, critical mass, you, you, you've got a, a large group of people, you've got a lot of competition on that floor, they're walking those aisles quickly, and you've got to turn some heads, and you've got you to gotta have something that pulls them in. I think the single larger pieces do that. Um, in my own experience, well, like I said, I had to stand out. I had to be. I, had, I was a niche w with what I was doing. So, amongst that, I, I wanted to. Too much will just be too busy. Look like a collage or a mosaic, and you can't kind of quite discern what you're really seeing. This audience, in my opinion, needs to kind of cruise through and have some sort of a marker or a beacon that they're that they they're gravitated or pulled toward, like a, you know, a moth to a flame, like a light, something that they're just kind of sliding into in that way. So I, I took a 10 foot by 10 foot booth or any size and, and maybe have that one large piece for the shock and awe and the attraction, take another wall, do a, do a few select medium sized pieces, and then maybe have another wall with sort of a grid of some smalls. 
Um, and I, I think that works. Um, uh, Rick and the gang here, the organizers of Redwood, will tell you, uh, and I, I 30% of negative wall space is really needed to show nicely. I think too much is just too much. It, it becomes saturated, it becomes confusion, and you know, it, and overstimulation. So don't pack up too much. I, I, take, I take a minimum amount of artwork uh, to the show. I figure with my group of artists and even with myself, we're gonna have an opportunity to sell and um, the component with our plan, conversely to doing it by yourself, which we haven't, I didn't really touch on, you're going to mark up a, a huge expense doing it yourself. And if you're not prepared to handle that correctly and be here on your feet all day and working the booth all day, and you know, then you let somebody else do it. Let somebody else that's professional handle it. And also, in a company like ours, I can minimize that expense for you, um, you know, five times, because. I'm, I'm going to take a wall and I'm going to put a piece or two or three or four pieces of, of yours and I've marginalized everything else out of the equation. All the travel, all the hotel, the expenses. So all you really need to do with me is hopefully sell one or two pieces and you're, you're, you're covered. You're, you're now profiting. And it's hard to do on your own when your expenses are $10,000 to do a show because the problem with large is large price tag. It's, it's large for shipping, a 40, 60 inch painting, seven, eight foot painting. To try to get that here from Fort Lauderdale, you know, it starts to cost a lot of money. And if it's, you know, starts to add up on you, you start to figure out when you do the checks and balances, well, I've got to charge. And that's what happened in our gallery as well. We saw that I've got big walls, but those big paintings at ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 were not selling. And, my, and, and the people that could buy them was smaller margin. So we figured out there was a, a comfortable size that you know, at comfortable prices. And, and there's going to be another lecture about that this weekend over here. And I'm curious. I'm going to sit on it. I want to hear what they have to say about it. So um, I figured that there was a, a, a comfortable middle ground of size and price that spoke to uh, a majority. That's really where uh, Artblend wanted to be at, not the minority of it, the one person that can come in and spend you know, 50, 60,000, 30,000 on a painting, it's going to happen, and those people have an excellent brand at what they're doing. But um, I'm playing to more of a, of, a, of a wider group of art buyers. But your dilemma is going to be, um, you know, how much to bring, what to bring. And my experience over the time was to bring less, pack less, cut down on the, all the expenses that goes with it, and play the long-term game, which is... When you come to a show like this, just start co concentrate on the networking and shaking hands and taking many, as many names as you can. If you, if, if you don't, I mean, because if you don't, you didn't, you didn't really maximize the opportunity of being here. Look, going home with 10 names is nothing. I mean, you got, you got, to, you got to come out of here with 50 to 100 or a couple hundred names and, and, and contacts to make it worth it, if, especially if you're showing solo. Because all, it's not just standing at the booth like on a, on a car lot hoping to sell a car today or anything. You, it's it's long term. You've got you've to follow up with these people. You've got to continue to email them. You've got to send them stuff in the mail. They just got to keep remembering you, remembering you until they basically say, okay, Mike, geez, stop sending me stuff. Stop emailing. I get it. And, but hey, you know what? They remembered me. And that's all. Just try to make that connection. So this is a fine line there. Good question. Yeah, in the back. Thank you. Uh, I've got a couple of emails from galleries uh, offering to represent me, but they've asked for a fee. Yeah. Now, is that normal? You got here late to the, to, yeah, it is normal. It, today, I think it's normal. I think it's absolutely, and it, it might not have been so normal 10 years ago, and you should have seen the hate mail that I got and the fights that my wife got into, you know, and she was a tiger at it. But, you know, it, it's not a, a bad thing. What I told, earlier was just do your homework. I mean, they said, we have huge expenses to, to be here. It's not that I, it's, it, I hate to hear that, well, you've been paid, you're all done, you're going to lay back, you don't have to work, you don't have to hustle, you know, you've been paid. Well, if, if you feel that way about the company that's approaching you, it may be so. So 
ask those questions. Do your homework. Because he said, what, what, we what I talked about earlier was, you've hired me, you've paid me, you'll know whether I'm doing the work or not, and you're going to come get me if I'm not. So, you know, you're holding my feet to the fire. I've got to perform for you. I want to perform. I want to get up, and I want to make sales for you because if I don't, well, you're going to notice if I was working and doing the work. And if, and if you're making sales, you're more likely to continue to work with me. So I'm invested in it and I want to continue that way. But like any business, there's, there's sharks, there's piranhas, there's thieves, there's muggers. Watch out. You know, we're trying to eradicate them. My wife, you know, has got the watchdogs on them. And, you know, we don't want them in this business. I didn't, I didn't want them in the business. You know, I seen them. And I said, look, they're going to put a black eye in our industry, and they're making it very hard for my wife and I to do something we're going to be very good at. And in the, it may be weird right now, 10 years ago, but in the future, it will become normal. But, um, you know, you stick with the leaders, you stick with the winners, you look at the history. And, 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 I, and I said earlier, don't just hide behind an email and that anonymity. Get somebody on the phone. Ask to come see them. I can't tell you how many people come in as secret shoppers to Artblend. You know, they just, you know, it's like, yeah, that's a, that's an agent, that's an artist, and, and but I, I want them to. Yeah. Good question. It's, sorry, just one more thing. I, I don't think I was clear enough. What I meant was not for the art shows, but other yeah. than that. Other than that, absolutely, yeah. not just at the art fair in a gallery. We, we talked about earlier about yeah, the galleries have expenses. I, it, you know, to keep a gallery open, um, you know, pay that rent, pay that overhead, pay the staff is enormous, and you know, so. It, it, it's, 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 it's to me normal because we said earlier w without that support I mean I'm not we're not pickpocketing anybody we're not if you're over asking or overcharging you, you know you'll, you'll know I think um, you know it's got to be fear and it's got to be right and you're going to have to write, ask the right questions I mean some people will be more candid and transparent others won't and if they're not they've got something to hide it just doesn't feel right walk away um, we're very open and transparent at what we do. I mean, outside of showing my P&L statements, you know, which <laughs> my wife has locked up in the vault, I don't even get to see them. But it is normal. Just check out what normal behavior is, okay? And uh, keep keep them honest uh, is what I always say. Um, and, and another uh, takeaway is remember this. The, the way a relationship begins is usually the way that it ends. Right? That's it. I'm getting the wrap. Hey, I'm at Booth 315. I'll be here all weekend. Enjoy the art fair. Excellent. Come see me. Thank you, guys.